Previously on the bastard executioner. Leon Tell, he torments me. Petra's cross hung about his noble neck. <laughs> Every glint of that sapphire mocks my hesitation to plunge a blade into his heart. As I want to plunge a blade into the man who slaughtered my wife and son. The Reeve must stay alive until we all have our truth. Baroness, at this very moment, our king is deciding the fate of Ventrishire. I travel to Windsor in two weeks' time, summoned by his majesty, to receive guidance on how we govern. Why are you doing this? How buried truths bind us. And your skills will serve me. A deep secret can cut both ways. I could lose my position. You, your soldier, your new wife and children, all of you will most certainly lose your heads. I would venture to say you are more skilled than my most honored knights. You are a mystery to me, Master Gwen. As I am to myself, my lady. This is what you do when I sleep. Lazy. You should be resting. That's a bit rougher than you're used to, love. After six days of riding dinner to that, I feel a bit rough. Azula holds no God. And the Seraphim hold too many. Born with a heart, the 
Why do you still love me? I promised I would always protect you and I could not. Not that is true. Holds no condition. It changes shape. Filling the cracks in our hearts will stop it from breaking. Our love will exist always. Through any trial of time or circumstance. I feel that. I'm afraid I'll never find that love again. You already have. I didn't mean to say you're afraid, my love. Do not my kisses give comfort? <laughs> The boy's fetching water, and the baby sleeps after a good suckling. <sighs> this is not natural. A husband and wife need to be close. God has put me in this place. With you. I will learn to be close. Dan, have you not loved me always? It's all right, lad. Another morning venture? Just tending to the tasks of our trade chamber. And what task calls you to the far caverns nearly every new day? No spies on our trail. No. Just curious observers. Chamberlain, our honored guests have arrived. Just puffed up crag. I don't know. It's Baron Price, Maddie. You did service in Price here but last month. They gave you no fair wage. We left in haste for this shire. If we left in haste, perhaps an apology is due to those we served. With well, advice, Marshal. Any of Price's nobles on this ride we may have encountered before good night. I believe only the Chamberlain. He was there when you were unjustly paid. Welcome to Castle Ventress, good Baron. You are an honoured and welcomed guest. Not waste your honey on me, Corbett. Where's the Baroness? Regretfully, on her way to Windsor, the King demanded an audience. What? 
She's not here. She's the one who pleaded for this visit. Baron Price has traveled two long days on the back of a hard steed, leaving the side of his ailing wife. Lady Love is deeply contrite, but as you know, when His Majesty calls, all must answer she left but yesterday. Why did you not dispatch a messenger? Simple arithmetic, Sir Dyer. A messenger sent yesterday would have met you beyond the midway of our shires. I thought it most wise to have you complete your journey, allow your caravan to rest. If you're indeed most wise, Sir Corbett, your baron would be here in flesh and not but a stone effigy at your bridge. It seems we have little choice but to stay the night. The Baroness left nearly a week ago. An observation which serves no purpose. We need to make a full day of our ride to the sea caves. We cannot risk this noble finding another face on Maddox. And one of Corbett and his observers. There'll be no journey today, Maddox. Our Chamberlain has planned a tournament for the nobles of Prussia. He wants his able punisher in the fray. You as well, Marshal. Welcome. Is this Lady Love Ventris? Huh? If so, then God truly is a gifted gardener, for he has planted the finest flower of Wales that wins the castle today. Thank you, sir. I am Lady Love Ventris. And by your charm and pleasant visage, I must assume you are the honored Earl of Cornwall. My manners. Forgive me, but it seems your radiant beauty has robbed me of courtly reason. Piers Gaviston, trusted advisor to His Majesty, King Edward II. Thank you, Sir Gaviston. Your flattery puts me at ease. But I do hope your reason returns. We have so much more than beauty to discuss. Indeed, Paulin. The King has requested that you join him for his midday meal. He is most eager to discuss the future of Ventrechir. How soon can you be presentable? We have had a very long journey. Perhaps some time to refresh. Of course. Servants will show you to your quarters. I will see to fitting you with a proper gown. I serve at the king's pleasure. My lady, that man shows you that man is the voice in the king's ear with influence to sway Edward in the direction that he chooses. Come, let us see if we might transform me into something more presentable. What is it? I do not think Wilkin will make the ride today. It is best you leave here. Make camp along the coast. Why? For what fate lands here? Please, trust my warning. I've never seen her like that before. What will happen here? I do not know. I sense trouble. I sense, do you see things that might happen? I feel them, through the people they touch. Where's your mate? He's in the western colds. He gathers red coral for my cures. You are frightened. Yes. But more for others than for myself. If Wilkin doesn't come, the burden of your safety falls to his friends. That is as kind as it is unwise. 
that is how it would be. Thank you, good Lord. a girl that one day I'd be a guest of the king. My heart had been bursting with joy. It is thrilling. It should be. But I feel no thrill, just dread. So much depends upon the outcome of this meet. Perhaps it was unwise to not bring counsel. Do you remember the ball of Black Oak? Lord Craddock's son, Morgan. Yes, a portly, harsh-looking boy. Tiny eyes. Who did not look favourably upon the daughter of a Welsh lord befriending the daughter of a house servant. No, he did not. There was a day Morgan decided to show me my proper place. Yes, we were playing and he chased you into the stables, pinned you to the ground. He was chastising you. And, as he raised a hand to strike me, suddenly he yelped like a dog and fell to the dirt. And there you were. Shovel in hand, the lioness of Wales. Afraid of no one. Secure of heart. I'm afraid there is no comparing the bores of our childhood with the royal beasts we presently face. You'll handle this situation as you do all others. With grace and strength. Whatever happened to Morgan the Boar? Very sad. While travelling home one night, he was devoured by wolves who mistook him for a fat two-legged hog. That is horrible. And a story you just invented. <laughs> Pardon, Chamberlain. A report somewhat disturbing, I'm afraid. What now? Foot soldiers discovered a body along the South Court Trail this morning. Limbs severed. Body carved with devil symbols. A sacrifice of some kind. Shit. I've seen the remains. It was murder. By a hideous hand. Be certain that your men say nothing of this crime. I do not want Baron Price thinking that Satan dances at our gate. Shouldn't you be preparing for the contest, Maddox? Impressing Price with your earthy swagger? That would be unwise for Maddox. My beloved wife is reminding me that I was in Priceshire before coming here. In service to their chamberlain. Huh. Dyer. Anyone else who would have known the face of Maddox? Not in this caravan. Good. Do not concern yourself with Sir Dyer. He plants himself so deeply inside his baron's arse, he has no vision beyond those bony cheeks. And if he realizes I'm not Gwen Maddox? The price your chamberlain will not disrupt your happy new life. You have my word. As much comfort as your word gives me, Chamberlain. Do not forget, you've as much to lose in this as I do. There is no need for all this suffering, Tobias. We only want to find the other Seraphim, so that we may help Translate the sacred text you all will. There's nothing more you can take from me, Robinus. I have no more. I don't think. You think summoned above, Master? I demand for more meaningless counsel, I'm sure. Thank you, Sir Cormac. Has this one come forth with anything? He has not. Continue the work, my son. Yes, Master. Take the eye.
Ah, you have a gift of divine timing, good father. His Majesty requests counsel. I am here. At the King's balcony, as I am yours. Ah, Lady Ventry. May I introduce His Holiness, the Archdeacon of Windsor. The Baroness from Wales. My deepest condolences, my child. Thank you, Archdeacon. It is an honor to meet a man of such holy prestige. I am but a humble cleric, my lady. Serving God is my only prestige. Take the Baroness and her maiden to the King's dead chamber. You may wait there for His Majesty. May I ask a question, Sir Gaveston? Ah, no. Do not worry, Baroness. The dress looks lovely. The King will be pleased. He loves golden things. Find me a shovel. Is this why the Baroness needed to meet? To have me review her ledgers? Of course not. But I thought your time here might be put to good purpose. Allow you to gain knowledge of our Shire. It does not take much knowledge to see that Ventry Shire has more debt than it does resources. Only if one looks at the present limitations. With men and resources, we could clear the rugged beach and build a port that allows larger seafaring vessels. It would make Ventry Shire the center of all imports and exports west of the marsh. The Shire would earn a tariff on all goods coming and going. That is a decision for the king. Perhaps. But I know, dear Baron, that before Longshanks divided Prussia and gave this coastal half to his favorite constable, that you indeed had similar plans for such a port. No reason why you torment me with this ill-fated history. Even if his majesty allows the baroness to remain in power, we do not have the resources to build anything. You, however, have wealth to spare. After all these years of abusive taxation from your now deceased baron, why should I lend the Shire even half a shilling? Oh, there would be no lending, sir. Because the Shire would be yours. Lady Love is a widow, and her rule is in the hands of a frivolous king. There are only two things that would trump such a decision. An heir adventurous. Or marriage to an appointed noble. You are quite aware that I'm already married. Yes, and forgive my boldness, Baron, but I am told that the Lady Truller's consumption grows beyond the prospect of a return to wellness. You are indeed bold, Chamberlain. Yes, uh, I'm sorry, Baron, I mean no disrespect. Sometimes my love of a brighter future clouds my reason. I am, I confess, a bit of a dreamer. And in this dream, I presume you would be my Chamberlain. I believe that would serve you best. And your Baroness, is she open to such an arrangement? Lady Love would do anything to hold on to her beloved land. Although your good looks and charms would be enough to sway any woman. You've given this much thought, Corbin. Perhaps too much. I'll give thought to this. I foresee two obstacles. My Chamberlain, Sir Dyer's family has influence with the King. Losing his position would wound his pride and prestige. Indeed. And the other? The other? The other is God's will. He may well see fit to return my wife to good health. Of course, one could only hope. I will give both deep thought. We've been here nearly two hours, my lady. You must be starving. I'm fine. I'm well aware that one never eats before the king. 
While the king may have to step over our ghostly bodies, we will surely faint with hunger. Perhaps just a plum or a crust. Sit down, maiden. I don't like the French. The French will survive without your support. Exodus, one of my favorites. I like Bible stories. Can you read any of it? No, sir. I'm too dull minded. Who told you that? My father. I'm, I'm sorry. It's all right to speak the truth. But my mother. Is afraid. Yes. Your father. He hurt you and your mother, didn't he? And we deserved it. No one is, deserves to be hurt. You're not dull of mind. One of the brightest boys I've met. I have a deal to offer. I'll teach you how to read. You help me with your mother's worry. May I still call you father? Of course. No, no, it's Kalo. Where's he going? He wouldn't say. Hey, I'm taking the heel of warning. I promised her we would stay. We've been here for nearly two months, and we are no closer to avenging our families. It's time to go. Go away. It doesn't matter. Waking you will bring a worse fate. <laughs> what would your brother do? Aaron would stay. Aaron is dead. Because of me. That is not true. Then you should go. What of Wilkin Toran? They won't protest. They understand the plight of boys. I am not a boy. Boys run from things they are afraid of. Well, you're not afraid more. All the time. But I look at my fear. And I pray to find some small piece of bravery to face it. But I was safe, my friend. Gives nothing. It's the same as the other three must have. And the scroll he was carrying. Well, the text is of a similar Aramaic origin. But the symbols that alter it, they differ from the other three. So that nothing learnt from one can be used to decipher another. Yes, the code is well conceived. <laughs> this was some kind of message. A warning, perhaps, to another Seraphim. We found Tobias at the port. Near western bound vessels. They wend the river and channel into the Irish Sea. Go to the king's map room. Consider what we have learned. And make sound judgment of where he was to journey. Yes, master. And what of the bias? The fate of the others. Va. De la heresy. Thank you. 
I beg your pardon. But my lady wants to be certain that she is waiting in the right chamber to meet the king. Unlike my maiden, the king's servants know not to speak of things beyond their status. I'm sorry, Baroness. I'm so lost here. I don't know how to help. Oh, I'm sure our generous king will not mind sharing a few scraps with his misbegotten Welsh children. Stop smiling. Warrior's dressing hangs well on you, Maddox. It's as if you were born to wear it. You both may be wearing rags that are condemned by some other. Do not concern yourself. I promise you, no utterance of a false punisher will ever reach the ears of law. Placed in custody at the court to determine guilt. Guilt of what? Most handedly schooling mine in the art of warfare. Once we marry our forces, Baron, we'll have the most skilled and feared army in the whole of Wales. I must confess, an army of might in these times does ring comfort, huh? <laughs> you should get comfortable with the prospect of doubling your resources. <laughs> Do not think it wise to let those great sisters disgrace the baron. I would be more concerned with the disgrace of your knights, dear Henry. Yes, I see you make brutal sport of the weakness in our ranks. We gave your men every advantage. Well, that man over there isn't even a soldier. We put in but our punisher, Maddox. Maddox? Yes, Gawain Maddox, an executioner. Came up from the southern lands not that long ago. Well done, Maddox. <laughs> Seems our man needs a great deterrent. Yeah. 
What? The king is ready to see you. See me? Now at this hour? This favorite time of day. He's in the hunting garden. Servants will show you when you address. I do not like the French. Can you see it? <laughs> Uh, yes, yes. Uh, I offer our sadness and uh, deep sympathy on the Baron's passing. Thank you, sir. Your gifts of condolence were quite generous. Yes, good. <laughs> you are but a uh, petit scarabido. <laughs> oh, a little golden beetle. Yes. Yeah, your pool, Majesty. Uh, yes. Oh. So lovely to, uh, to meet you. Your Majesty, forgive me taking time away from sport, but I was summoned to receive counsel on the future of my shire. So Gaston, we'll have a uh, discussion, uh, approfondi, yes, uh, with my Chancellor. Of course, sire. We will make the soundest decision. Ah, perfect. Mwah. Allow me to walk you back, Baron. Did you know all along that he would simply hand my fate over to you? The marsh territories frustrate the king. His time is best spent on more considerable matters. The air at home. Are we but a frustration? A thing to take time away from games of boys? My father and his father before him ruled that shire with kindness and grace for over 50 years. When Longshanks betrayed us, took Wales for his own, I married Eric Ventris with an agreement that my family would be allowed safe passage to Scotland and that the castle I grew up in would be given to an heir. I am moved by your devotion, dear love. That's the only agreements that matter are the ones you make now. I will let you get back to your more considerable matters, Sir Galliston. And this little golden beetle will crawl back to her marshland down here.
This is not Gawain Maddox. The painter with the same name had a similar scar, but he was slighter in stature. I so appreciate you keeping your suspicions to yourself, Sadaya. Now that all doubt has been lifted, Baron Price will be informed. <laughs> Have you gone mad? I promised you he wouldn't utter a word of your secret, and now you will make sure of it. Make sure of what? That he never batters. Kill him. I will not. This is your place. Sarah. Rattle! This is our mother's milk. This is what we are. What we know. I'm not a man who does this. They have been taken into the custody of Manor Law under the suspicion of a brutal satanic murder. They've done no crime. Everyone you love or care about is either dead or within my grasp to make that so. He is a pompous annoyance. God will cheer when he drops down to hell. Give it a natural twist. Drunk, hit his head, something simple. And I will make sure that his death is found to be an unfortunate accident. of the Lord. Your soul is as false as your name. Yes. I see you are prepared for your journey. I wish to do this over morning meal, but as you appear to be an ace, I have taken counsel with the king's chancellor. He will draft the decree of division. Entre Shire will be divided into thirds. Two territories going to the neighboring shires, and the third, the coastal area with a castle will fall to my authority. And that decision is final? <laughs> Indeed, Baroness. It is most final. Have a safe journey. And please, keep the gown as our gift for your loyalty and patience. I'm afraid the gown will soon be of no use. Nor the decree of division. I'm with air. Blessed gift from my departed husband. That was the news I wished to share with the king. Thank you for your hospitality, Sir Gaveston. You may send your servants for our things. Au revoir. Au 
Your Baroness never requested a visit, did she? A deception, good Baron. Compelled by my divine sense that our shires deserve the fruits of a greater tree. Seems so dire's tree bore fruit a bit more deadly. Yes. A sad and faint-hearted way to die. Foul, Baron. You're an impressive man, Corbett. And yet my admiration is matched by an equal part of caution. Embrace the former, good Baron. You will hear from me soon. Start with the maps and tide charts. One of these ports or shires would have been Seraphim's destination. Why would you do this? I don't, Maddie. You do. As you have always done when we need correction. <laughs> 